everyone, and welcome to Star Trek Birth of the Federation. This game came out in 1999. I've had this game pretty much since the day it came out. Well, maybe a week or two after it came out. But I've had this game a long time. In fact, I've had it so long. It actually comes on a CD. Woo. Green screen effects. It comes on a CD, which is the old fashioned style, flat, you know, from the Federation. Uh, thingies. And yeah, it's not digital downloads, but kind of like literally all my other games are digital downloads. This is the only one I play that has a physical media. And I say I play it as in every single PC I've ever owned has had that on it, including this one, uh, which is my latest PC, which I've had to reinstall the game because I got wiped when I upgraded to Windows 10 a while ago, but I haven't put it back on since. And my work laptop has had it on. Pretty much every PC I've ever owned has had that game on it because I love the game. Now, the game is from 1999, so it came out two years before Windows XP came out. So it's uh, clearly not designed for Windows uh, NT kernel, uh, but it's definitely built for DOS. And yet in Windows 10, which this PC is running, it runs quite happily. So let's, have a good, let's get a game running, shall we? Just show you how the game works. This is actually a pretty good game considering its age as well. So let's go to start a new single player game. By the way, the game has multiplayer and it's over a network. So you can actually do uh, internet based, network based multiplayer. Okay. Configure game parameters. Thank you, computer. So when you start the game, you can choose what tech levels people have. You can say, oh, actually, I want the Kardashians to be developed. I want the Federation to be advanced. I want the Ferengi to be expanded. And I want the Klingons to be beginners. That way, I look at, that way you can actually choose how much difficulty you want. If you're going to make yourself the ultra powerful, most advanced, everybody else is the really beginners, you make the game nice and easy for yourself. If you make everybody else really powerful and you're the beginner, you know, you can choose how you want it to be. So what we're going to do is just to get started, everyone is going to be on level two early because level one is really, 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 really slow build. It's good for I want to play the game by myself and let me just turn the mouse sensitivity down because... Right, so you can choose main, minor races. So they are the Bajorans and, you know, all the smaller races that you get that aren't the major factions. Major factions are on the side there. Um, but obviously the uh, minor races hate other people. Now you can say none. I don't want any minor factions. Uh, so there are literally only those big factions around. You can say, ah, actually, I want some, a few, some, I want many. And the more you have, the more plants that are already there. You have to convince them to join you or you have to destroy them. If you say none, you just colonize the plants yourself. So it's that kind of, what degree do you want? We have Then we have the difficulty, obviously normal, hard, impossible, Simple and easy. Let's go with normal, please. If you want to limit the timer, it's like if it's a multiplayer game, you set a timer and say you've got five minutes to do your tactical stuff and strategy stuff. You can do that. I won't do that. Random events on. Random events are stuff like there's a Borg invasion. It's like, well, the Borg, by the way, are evil. I have sent entire fleets of like 50 ships at the Borg. Uh, one single cube and just gone. Tactical combat, manual, automatic. I will do manual. Uh, victory conditions, domination, vendetta, domination or vendetta. So vendetta is and domination. So you get the idea. So you get to choose all different types of universes. What do you want? I want a ring, a spiral, irregular, elliptical. We'll go with spiral because that's what the Milky Way is. How big do you want it to be? Medium, large, small. We'll stick with medium for now, but basically that chooses how fast you run into these guys. Except select galactic power to control. Yes. A 1999 game, year not price, <laughs> lets you choose any of them. So if we said, I want to be the Cardassians, what do the Cardassians have to say about themselves? The Cardassian Union. Mm, the Cardassian Union. We got the Federation. The United Federation of Planets. How about the Ferengi? The Ferengi Alliance. The Klingons. The Klingon Empire. And finally, the Romulan Star Empire. Now, the Romulans are the best to play with because they have ability to create cloaking devices and they can create extra dilithium for building ships faster um, because they have, a, they have a way of mining at double speed. But we're going to do the Federation because I want to show off some of the ships. The United Federation of Planets. And we'll have a look, shall we? Now, what place, what kind of solar system do you think the Federation will have? 
Do you think they'll have, oh, look, it's a soul sector. I, I was surprised it was going to be the soul sector. <laughs> okay, so it's a soul sector, and we've got pretty much all of the normal planets. You've got the uh, Mars there, which is a G-class planet. We have Earth, which is an M-class, and we have uh, Venus, a volcanic Y-class. We have Mercury, which is also a volcanic Y-class. We can see their maximum populations. We've got the birth rate for each planet independently of the whole system. We can also see there that uh, this planet, uh, where you are there, gets a 75% energy boost because of its proximity, whereas Earth has a boost to its food, 15%. Okay, and they all get their own, the, each planet has like their own bonuses and anything with a blue icon, like you see the gas giants there, all got bees, none of those are actually colonizable. So they're good. And you see the star, the soul sector, just whoop, here, has this little blue icon, which is the dilithium, which lets you know that that star has dilithium. Okay, so, but they've got this star map up here, we've got the soul sector, we've got these places here, we don't know where they, what these are, they're just something. Uh, they are pretty much just normal planets and, still oh, star sector, sorry. And this one here, we've got that little federation flag, that is our location. Okay. So, over here, we've got two ships, we've got a science vessel and a colony ship. So I'm going to send the science vessel up to this planet here. Boom. And I'm going to send the colony ship down to this one here. And the reason I'm sending them to them two planets is because them two are, bottom, are close together and the colony ship is slow. Whereas the science ships go into the top corner and science ships are very fast, so I can get that science ship to do a bit more scouting around as we need it. Okay. Well, that's the basic part done. We've got map overlays. We can go to economic overlay. Tells us we've got 310 credits coming from the Soul Sector. Um, we've got events. But there probably won't be any events right now because, you know, nothing. Military will show us what ships we've got and where things are moving. And overlay. Let's just choose what mixture of them we can have. Very useful. Also, the map over here has got small and large. Large is actually the entire space sector, I believe, all of the uh, map. This is a medium map. So it should be most of it. Small, let's zoom in nicely and we can move around. I'm not quite sure what the, uh, which one it was to move. Arrow, arrow keys to move, okay. Well, there we go, so we've got that bit there done. We can double click on the sector to get into the what is on the source sector. Or we can right click and bring up a nice little menu the same way we are for now. Okay, so the soul sector has, it produces 86 credits per turn. It produces 47 food. That 47 food is a positive 47, so it's we sort of stop piling food. If we were making, if we were eating as the same amount, we'd say zero. Industry produces 334 industrial units per turn, meaning we can build anything that takes less than that in one turn. Anything that's more than that takes two turns or more. For example, on the top here, there's things we can build. If I were to build a mass react replicator, it would take 270 building costs, and we could produce 230, so it takes two turns. Also, ship building. We can build the colony ship. So colony ships are the only ship in the game able to actually colonize planets. There's no other conditions, no two ways about it. Then you get your destroyer. Ooh, mouse is a bit sensitive for this resolution. The Miranda class. I do like the Miranda class. It looks uh, nice and flat on the top as if it's, you know, designed to dodge stuff. The science vessels and your troop transports. Now troop transports are what you would use to invade an alien planet or to build an outpost or a star base. So, you know, you can use them to build stuff in space as well. For now, I do actually want an extra science vessel, and then I want an extra colony ship. Let's see my production due over here. However, there we go, came off. I actually kind of want to build something for the system itself first, because our production is 234. I think we can upgrade that a little bit, maybe bring up our uh, replicators a couple of notches. Give me, oh, don't want that many. Give me two new uh, replicators. Uh, actually, at this stage, I actually need that colony ship. I need to start colonizing those extra planets pretty quickly. Let's get straight out there. There are two sectors nearby. Let's colonize those as fast as we can. Okay, energy production on this planet is used by our Dilithium refinery. Our subspace scanner is now turned on, and our shipyard is also powered up. We have a spare capacity of 160 units of power. It gets complicated really, really quickly, but at the beginning it's easy. Right click to bring us up to our tech tree. Welcome to the research tech tree. Where should we put our efforts into our research production? So this is literally it. You can, it's, there's six areas to research, and you choose what percentage of our research budget we put into them. Um, you can go over here and say, actually, I want to see the tech stuff, please. 
show me if I wanted to get propulsion, I wanted the warp drive. What would I have to read? What would I get for reason for doing that? Oh, I get all these. Oh, okay. You see, and we remember we're already at uh, tech level two, uh, I believe. So we got the uh, the destroyer, but we don't have the galaxy class like cruiser because we need energy levels and crystal level three. Look at that ship, isn't that god? In ease. Go away. Thank you. Damn it. Stop it. There we go. But yeah, so that ship there is pretty nice. It's gonna rotate you the right way. And then rotate. There we go. So yeah, that's the uh, the light cruiser apparently, which to me and you looks a lot like the Enterprise. Ships available are the science vessel. There we go. The destroyer class, which we've all seen earlier. The heavy destroyer. Yep. The heavy escort, I'll come back to in a moment. Um, the heavy cruiser, which is the Enterprise G? The one that um, was in, in the final episodes of the Next Generation series. So yeah. You have the light cruiser. Can I have the mouse, please? Thank you, game. It's actually not the game, it's OBS. It uh, doesn't like me recording the game. We have the light cruiser. There we go, and we have the Strike Cruiser. And that was more like the science vessel I remember from the past anyway. The Command Cruiser, which you should all recognize immediately, and if you don't recognize it, you really need to go back and watch Star Trek immediately. We have the Dreadnought, which is clearly a sovereign class vessel. Yep, colony ships you've seen, outposts look like that, star bases look like that, troop transports look like that. Now. The reason I went, I skipped the um, heavy escort because I love the heavy escort. I think it's a nice little ship, and you might recognise it. It is, of course, the Defiant class. I do like the Defiant class. I think it is a very nice ship. It requires pro weapons, propulsion, and energy levels of ten, and biotech computers uh, uh, and construction of eight and nines. It is a late game ship, and I have to date only ever had this ship once. Um, I was still being researched, so. Uh, but we want to focus our production on making new stuff, and we actually want to get into defense stuff. So if we said, oh, I want to make sure we had uh, upgrade, oh, upgrade our production. I want to get mass replicators level two. We already have those, mass replicators level three. So we construction three. That upgrades our ability to produce. So construction level three is what I'm aiming for quickly. So construction down here, whack 100% of our research budget into construction level two uh, three immediately just to get that done as quick as we can because I want that I want to, be able to produce stuff faster okay we have no diplomacy yet so we haven't met anybody else um, we don't really have any um, espionage stuff yet we haven't met any other races so we're good to ignore that and continue that is all this for turn one so let's go processing turn immediately new static has been found because we moved over here the colony ship has found not bad actually, it's an orange class star. It is the system by the name of Kitoma. And it has three planets with a total population of zero. Now the population is zero because nobody has actually, uh, none of these planets are colonized yet, or colonizable, terraformed, that's the word for it. The desert planet can do 45 million people. Uh, the ocean planet can do 95 million people. And the volcanic planet can do 20 million people. Ooh. We can get a lot of people there, but could you move to that planet next? I right clicked. Can you move to that planet next? Thank you. I right clicked and left clicked and it says no. So go to this sector next. You, however, science ship up here. You found me a nice little star with jungle and volcanic planets. However, I want you to continue on to the next planet so we can see what's in them. I'm going to leave the salt sector alone because we've done, we have nothing to wait for. End the turn. An alien culture has been discovered. The Angosians have a nearly perfect society, but they pay a high price. Their enhanced soldiers deserve social as well as military respect. Okay, so this is one of the minor races. They don't have any tactical capability. They will not attack, they will not leave their own sector, but they will have their own defense ships. If you want to bring these guys on board, you can negotiate with them and say, hey, hey, come on, be friends. For the most part, you can pretty much ignore them. Um, Unless you want the population, because they, obviously they have they have a solar system here. It's currently got a 130 max population due to uh, them having one planet colonized planet, and also you got the other ones you can add to it by colonize, by terraforming them. Let's give that guy, and they are here. 
that's their sector because I remember their name Angola uh, down here we have Gemini Hydra oh that's gonna be a nice place with energy production boat boost and a food production boost oh that's a nice sector but what about the one below it okay let's look at the one below it boom and now we get to an interesting bit these little symbols here there are unknown ships from unknown races science vessel investigate Okay, how is uh, the Soul Sector doing right now? Soul Sector is still building me two colony ships. It has four turns remaining before we get a new colony ship. We can also buy them fast if we have the credits for it. And we have now found a Ferengi non-combatant vessel. And our, so we have one Ferengi non-combatant vessel and a Federation ship fast attack. We can hail them, fight them, or auto. Auto will try and fight them most most times and then you end up losing anyway. Um, I recommend if it's non-combatant, hail them, and then you'll have that's it. If they are combatant, always fight, even if you choose to flee in the first turn, because if you choose to hail and it's combat, they will just destroy ships. So we'll, because it's non-combatant, we will hail them. Our opponents have retreated. An alien culture has been discovered. The Nausicans are a proud and strong race. They are always at war but never have a shortage of new recruits. Okay, and you can see here they already don't like us. Don't know why they don't like us. An alien culture has been discovered. Greetings from the Ferengi Alliance. Greetings. We are very pleased to meet your people and look forward to a long and profitable future of trade and commerce with you. Well, I hope so too. Diplomatic messages have been received. Okay, so when you get any events that are a big like diplomatic messages, uh, you get this little screen. So it's just a summary screen. You can bring this up anytime you want by simply pressing the summary button just there. But here we go. Events. The Federation defeated the Ferengi because hailing them is classed as a defeat. We defeated them by hailing them. Because technically they ran away. It's just a stupid way of doing it. Then we got the you encountered the Ferengi in sector J5. Uh, spirits on the home front were raised somewhat by the victory because again apparently you know hailing them is a victory and then goes on top of a friendship proposal so a diplomatic proposal has been issued also we can see here that our relationship between the different races and we've got the systems showing us our current populations and now what's happening in them pretty nice nice little overview okay so if we can just go to our diplomatic part here, we can see the Angosians, sorry, Angosians, have done a friendship treaty for infinite duration. The nature of our relationship has clearly changed. We regret that you, we regard you as our friends, and hence we invite you to trade with us. We believe that such change will be mutually beneficial. Not even what the word says, but it's of mutual benefit. So we can accept it, or we can reject it. We are going to accept it. Treaty will be accepted. We now have a new friend. We can also propose our own treaties. We can turn around to the Angosans and say, hey, how about an affiliation? A membership. So affiliation means if you get attacked, we'll defend you. It says here, we'll both benefit from this cooperation. If we pull our military infrastructure, we'll form a stronger whole. The thing is, it's not really worth it because they can't defend you because their ships will never leave their sectors. But it's a way to get to membership. Membership, if I need to click on it, oh, because they cancel that. Membership is like saying, greetings from the Federation of Planets, your attention is requested, we want to speak to you, blah, 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 but basically, we want you to become members, we will take over your planet, we will control your planet, and we can build everything from your planet, you become another planet of the Federation. Um, useful if you want to bring somebody on board as without colonizing or killing them all. The Ferengi, however, hello Ferengi, uh, we would like to offer a peace treaty, um, they, they are neutral, so they'll probably reject it, but we'll go with non-aggression. And we'll give... Right, so we're not going to pay them anything for it, but you can do if you want to do it. You can offer them any disputed territory if you don't have any. And how long do you want it to run for? Well, non-aggression for 50 turns. And we're going to say, there's no need for bloodshed between us. Let's affirm... Nope. Let's so agree to put our hot house aside and pack non-aggression. No. Don't double-click. Uh, clear. We're going to affirm the enemies. A form a formal declaration of our mutual non-aggression. They'll probably say no to that, but it's worth trying anyway on the first turn. Back to the main group. And we have this new planet to look at. Let's have a look at the new planet. Ooh. Now, the Nauticans, they're a warlike species. They don't like us very much. But, uh, 
they have dilithium. They have dilithium on that planet and we want the dilithium. So we have to try and convince them to join us or not to join us. Those are the two options we really have. There isn't really an option of that. And if they don't want to join us, we have to try to just ignore them or destroy them. So Nauticans. I want the Nauticans on my side because I want them actually in the firm. So I'm going to offer them a friendship agreement and a firm our treaty. They probably won't like it because they are a warlike species, but we have to try nonetheless. And um, we have a new sector up here, and this new sector is again, this is in uninhabited and there's no Delphium. So I'm still scouting for Delphium based planets. Let's move to there. There, however, here, have an explorer. The explorer is basically, I believe, a colony ship, which means they're going to start terraforming these planets, which is annoying. And here they have another colony, they have a colony ship. Ah, the colony ship. Okay, so let's end the turn. And immediately here we can see a nice planet, nice, uh, the colony ship here. I can't colonize this sector, so we can go for that one or we can go for that one. Let's go for Gamma Hydra. 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 I can't even see there's a dot in the line middle of it. One second, click. Gamma Hydra. Okay, Gamma Hydra it is. That's fine. We'll go back there. We'll colonize that sector because that sector's got a load of bonuses. Uh, we can't build ships from there, but at least we can start on stuff. As far as the one up here goes, we don't care too much about that. So I am going to bring my science ship down and investigate these sectors here. Scroll across. We can see the friendly ship there. It is a colony ship. So they're already trying to colonize areas. They're going to go for that sector there, most likely. But look where that ship is. And you are... Well, you're not doing anything yet when you're there. How long before that ship, colony ship is, is built? Two turns remaining on the colony ship. I will probably buy the second colony ship just to get it done faster. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, the Ferengi have signed a non-aggression treaty with the Federation. So now they can enter our sectors, we can enter their sectors. Um, very much fine um, that we're in at the same time without having to fight each other. But because it's a non-aggression treaty, we can't fight into each other's space. So they can't come near my planet, I can't go near their planets. But at the same time, um, we won't fight if we meet in the open space, which is pretty nice. Diplomatic messages have been received. And if we go, yep, we've got to care about them right now. So it's over now with Lozy at the diplomatic messages. There we go. Nauticans have rejected our friendship treaty. I expected that. The Ferengi have accepted the non aggression treaty. And the Ferengi have issued a statement. Uh, you're growing dangerously close to our borders. Okay. That is because we are here. Investigating this planet, which they are currently colonizing that J-class planet, as you can see there. We came here to investigate when it was open territory, but now you see there's a red line around this sector. This sector is dotted yellow because it's a Frenchy territory, and we are very close to it, so we have to now back off because it's only fair that we back off. So we will do that now. Back off one square to there, and we'll tell our colony ship here if they could please, could you? Boop, boop, boop. Could you terraform this planet, this sector? Select planet for terraforming. Absolutely. The ocean one right there, please. Okay, now, this Fringy ship shouldn't be allowed here, so next turn they're going to be forced to pull back. There's no two ways about that, so we're okay there. Next turn. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Diplomatic messages have been received. Okay, so a colony ship has been built in our solar sector, which is absolutely perfect. I wanted that ship immediately. And that ship is going to move somewhere in a moment. Uh, here we have the explorer who is currently investigating this planet. We are 33% through the terraformation. Terraformation? Is that really a word? That sector's not very good. That sector's okay. That sector is the best and there's people on it. We can't do all about that one. I don't want to go too far away from our home sector just now and the friend is already trying to colonize that one anyway. So we will head south to Kitma and we're going to start terraforming these planets as well. Uh, we're going to also go into our planet building and say eight, uh, six turns. I can't wait six turns. I'm just going to buy that ship. Out Purchase right. ordered. Thank you. And at that point, I think we need to start putting money into stuff. Uh, food's not a problem right now. We, we're at this, this source is at maximum anyway. Uh, power's currently not a problem. So I'm going to put some resources into... Give me another ten of them. We probably won't complete all ten, but we'll ask for it anyway. Oh, the word diplomatic message was a demand from the Ferengi. Okay, so the Ferengi have asked for us to give them a payment of 650 credits. 
because we were close to their border, they got upset and that's made them angry. Now, if we reject it, obviously it makes them angry. If we accept it, it makes them happy. Um, 650 credits is not a lot of money, and it's a friendly who care a lot about money. So we'll accept this one. Treaty will be accepted. And the next turn, money will be transferred to them. Our credits currently are 1,200, so we're more than good enough to ignore that anyway as a requirement. Uh, there is nothing else to do this turn, so let's end the turn. Okay, so we now have over here a colony ship, which is currently set to avoid tactics, and we are going to actually ask this one, could you please start terraforming? Thank you. Terraforming. Thanks. Select planet for terraforming. Uh, we'll go for the ocean planet. It's the biggest one that gives us a best return. How is Gamma Hydra coming along? Gamma Hydra, Hydra is at 66%, okay. But we also have, in the Sol sector, a brand new colony ship that we built. We actually bought it, so it comes next turn. It costs us a lot, but it was worth it. And I'm going to send you... Hmm, where should we send you, actually? Uh, well, I'll send you to here. It's currently a sector we don't care too much about, but you know, a new sector is better than no sector, as they say. I don't know who they are, but some, some people say it. Uh, we will take the uh, science ship. I'm going to rescue this planet over here. There we go. Okay, that is now done. And we are going to end this turn. Terraforming and completed. We have terraformed a planet. Excellent. And there's nothing else happened. That big gamma hydra, I'm guessing. Yes, the ocean class planet is now done. Maximum population of 100 million people. And we can even come down here now. Go colonize. This system will be colonized. And since there's nothing else to do this turn anyway. Oh, hang on a minute. No, there's nothing else to do this turn. There were no events regarding in terraforming being completed, so. This system is now Federation territory. Yep. We have a new planet in the Gamma Hydra system. Also, this ship did manage to sit with the sector. Uninhabited, fairly large. Let's just move to there. Okay. That is all done. I'm going to set you or my colony ship to terraform. Select planet for terraforming. Uh, do the L class. It has 65 million. It's a small planet, but fine. Now, this is where the game gets complicated. Gamma Hydra. Has no infrastructure right now. It has enough food to support 25 million people extra. So it doesn't go, hasn't got much. It's going to run out of food eventually, but it's going to take 12 days to build automatic farms. It's just, there's so much needs doing. So we're going to say mass replicator, and then we'll go to automated farms, and I'm going to buy that mass replicator. Because purchase order. they need to start producing their own materials. And right now, under their production list here, they got farming, but that's it. If we go to the Sol sector, uh, systems please, Sol. We see how the Sol sector's got a lot more in there. In fact, I'm going to actually take one off of the intelligence and put it into research so we can do that faster. There we go. So as you can see, we've got a lot more going on in Sol than we do in Gamma Hydra. So get them some production so they can start making their own stuff. And then turn. Terraforming completed. Okay, terraforming's been completed. And that'll be Kilmer? Yes, it's Kilmer, okay. And then we'll do it again. We'll say, you, can you terraform? Uh, can you colonize? Sorry, can you colonize? This system will be that colonized. There. And that's it. So we're going to colonize a planet. We can always send more ships later on to uh, terraform the rest of the planet. So, for example, in Gamma Hydra, when that planet there gets to its maximum 100 million people, we can, call that, we can terraform the other planets and they'll just expand into them. So it's not stopped at one planet, just because we did that, uh, but we're okay. Uh, my science ship, which was over here, appears to have flown off somewhere. Uh, actually, I think they are on this planet here. Yep, there they are. And nothing to nothing to report, basically. So I'm going to ask them to scoot around this way. And uh, we can start scouting this base around. But that is uh, sort of the first part of uh, the game. So it's a bit long, what, 30 minutes? That's not too bad. Uh, but the game is a slow building game, but it gets really, really fast building, really complicated battles in the future. So hopefully if we play any more of this game, but I'll show you all. I'm going to try and figure out what the lag is caused by.
because I'm getting a very slow light on the mouse. When I do that, it's fine, but if I, there you go, you see that? Yeah, I'm still rotating the mouse in a circle, so it lags out. I think it's actually to do with the, with the tooltips. I'm going to look at the seven there, but it's, it's OBS doesn't like it, because OBS is like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> but anyway, this is Star Trek Birth of the Federation. Let me know what you think of it if you want to see any more, but I, I really like this game. It's a complicated little one. Remember, this is a medium-sized map, so if I just move my map to large for a second, that's how much we've seen of the map right now. Yeah, it's a medium map and we've seen about a, a, a quarter of it in total. That uh, We can see this is all fog of war right now. Uh, the big maps are really big. They get to, they can they're, they're, they're about double the size, maybe a bit more than that, in every direction. Um, yeah, and you get to play as any of the species you want to play as. You can play as the Ferengi, you can play as the Romulans. You know, if they're on that major list, you can play as them. But uh, that is all we've got time for right now. Let me just bring up the source set because I want to see. Boop. There we go. There's the source set just for nice and good, nice and good. Yeah, that's the word. We'll use. There's the salt sector. I live on one of the planets, you can remember which one it is, you'll be better than me because I can remember which one I'm on these days. So much travelling, so much travelling. <laughs> okay guys, this has been Star Trek Birth Federation, a game I absolutely adore playing. Let me know if you want to see any more of it, let me know if you think of the game in general. If you liked the video, do give it a thumbs up now, all that normal crap that you have to do with YouTube nowadays. Uh, but uh, basically, until next time, comments in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Selection confirmed. Saving. Saving.